Not all heroic acts are apparent. Sometimes they are quiet and hidden. The results are just as remarkable. Often, it's the preservation of life. This is the story of a decent man, one who would quietly break rules to save thousands of lives. Eventually, he would be recognized as a hero, but not until it cost him nearly everything. It was 1938 during the Third Reich. Germany was ruled by the Nazis. In March of that year, Austria, a neighboring country, had been officially annexed by Germany. It was now under Nazi control and Jewish communities were facing persecution. They had no option but to flee. At first, negotiations between Switzerland and Nazi Germany led to the stamping of the infamous J in passports issued to Jewish people so that they would be recognized wherever they immigrated to. But then the borders would close and the instructions would change. By then, Paul Gruninger had been assigned as a border control commander in Switzerland. Like all other Border Patrol officials, he had one job, to turn any Jews who somehow made it to the border back. But Paul Gruninger, a man who had a reputation for being committed to the law, could not believe what he was being asked to do. Paul Gruninger was born in October of 1891 in St. Gallen, a city in northern Switzerland. Paul was born in a Christian home to a Catholic father and Protestant mother, who raised him to understand the sanctity of human life. Much later, he would reference his upbringing as influencing his decisions to save countless lives because he believed it was the only choice to make. As a young man, Paul loved to play football and played semi-professionally. He played for a local team and helped them win their one and only Swiss championship. Later, Paul began his career as a teacher, but when World War I began in 1914, Paul enlisted as a soldier. When his military service completed at the conclusion of the war, Paul joined the police corps. In his new career, Paul excelled, raising in the ranks with promotion after promotion. Eventually, he became the police captain. When Hitler came into power, Paul was tasked with patrolling the border. When he received orders to turn away Jews at the Swiss border, he was appalled. He could not agree with the inhumanity of it. At the conference of police directors, Paul called for borders to be kept open, saying that it was unconscionable to turn refugees away. He begged everyone to reconsider for the sake of humanity, but his pleas fell on deaf ears. Paul was expected to follow instructions, and after having made a career out of following the letter of the law as both a former soldier and a longtime police officer, he was not the kind of person who would break rules, but not this time. Paul Gruninger decided he would rather break rules than send Jews seeking refuge back to Germany where they would face certain death. When they arrived crossing the border illegally, swimming or on foot, Paul quietly defied these orders. He falsified documents so that passports issued to Jews would classify them as legal immigrants. They would then be able to stay at Diepelsau camp, a stop for immigration. Paul didn't stop there, however. When refugees came to him for help, he would spend his own money buying shoes, clothes, and other necessities. He did everything he possibly could to make sure they were okay. But no good deed goes unpunished, as they say. He was discovered in early April 1939. He had known for months that he was under investigation. Despite that he had continued to allow refugees fleeing a terrible end into the country to start a new life, he was willing to take the consequences. It was the German authorities who had informed the Swiss authorities of Paul's actions. By the time he was discovered, he had falsified 3,600 Jewish refugee passports, allowing them to enter the country, saving them from the Holocaust. The consequences of his defiance of the law were profound. He was arrested. He faced a trial that lasted for two years. In the end, he was found guilty of official misconduct and breach of duty. He was fined and had to pay the trial costs. He was stripped of his retirement benefits and served time in jail. With a criminal record, Paul was unable to find work and would live the rest of his life in poverty. He was ostracized and faced slander. His family, wife, and children were impacted as well. They became quite isolated. Yet, he never regretted his decision to help save the lives 
of thousands of fellow human beings. The court verdict was never a source of shame to him. In fact, he had felt he never really had a choice when life or death rested on his decisions and was proud to have saved many from torture and a brutal death. If he could go back, he would do it all over again. When asked why, he said, it was basically a question of saving human lives. How could I then seriously consider bureaucratic schemes and calculations? A couple of years before he died, Paul was finally issued a reserved letter of apology by the Swiss government, but they refused to reinstate his pensions and he ultimately died in poverty. It was 23 years after his death that Paul's legacy and name were restored. Finally, in 1995, in the same courtroom where he had been found guilty, the Swiss government annulled his conviction. The judgment against him was revoked, and he was cleared of all charges. To honor Paul, the Swiss government has named a bridge and stadium after him for holding on to his humanity by quietly breaking the law to save thousands for facing the consequences with no regrets for always remaining steadfast to compassion, Paul Gruninger was a true hero.